Wow. The answer is a peanut. Oh my God, it got the answer. That's so crazy. OpenAI just released the latest version of ChatGPT and it's already doing some very weird and very crazy things. This new model that they're calling O1 has a major breakthrough in reasoning. This means that it can now think like a human and is now smarter than most human beings with an IQ of 120. We're gonna jump in and see exactly how people are using this model right now, and then we're gonna do some tests to see how powerful it really is. So let's jump right in. So this model was released just a few days ago, and you can see here, again, the big breakthrough is in the reasoning model here. So it's solving harder problems and it's actually thinking. So if you can see here in one of the examples here, so if I just run a quick test, you can see that what we'll do is it'll actually start thinking. So you see how it says thinking right here? This is new. So what it's doing is it actually starts to reason and think about this problem. So I'm asking it a very specific question and it analyzes the problem, thinks about it, and then provides me a very thought out and proper response, which is something that it hasn't done in the past with the older models like GPT-4. So these are actually much more advanced ways of solving problems and a much more advanced way of reasoning. So you can see that it's actually scoring now. It's solving, so GPT-4.0 is only solving 13% of math problems, while this new model scores 83%. So it's 70% better than their latest model, GPT-4.0, which they just released. So this is a huge, huge leap forward in reasoning. So if we come down here, so obviously they're talking about some safety, they're talking about who, who it's for. So they're basically saying that this is particularly useful if you're trying to tackle complex problems in science, coding, math, and similar fields. And they're also saying that it can be used by healthcare researchers and things like that. So, and they go into some examples here with genetics. Um, they talk about how to use it. Um, they go into, you know, developers, how you can use it. So it's actually very limited right now. They're really capping the use here and it's very, very expensive compared to the old models. So I just wanna show you here this IQ test. So this is how much more advanced it is than some of the older models. So you can see here like Grok2 is scoring about, uh, I believe about an 85. GPT-4 has about an 82. And this is a, an IQ test here. You can see the Gemini somewhere in the 80s as well. Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is like the big breakthrough that they just had recently. It's in the early 90s. Three Opus is over here, you know, scoring right around 93, 95. Look how far advanced O1 is here in IQ. I mean, it is way past this bell curve and way ahead with 120. And again, this is way, way smarter than 90%, I wanna say, of human beings out there right now. So huge leap forward. And again, this is the first model that's now much more intelligent. So this is the average IQ for human beings is 100. So it's much more intelligent than the average human now. So kind of scary to think about, but that's where we're headed here with AI. Um, so something I already showed you here about the math problems. And so if we if we come over to some of the crazy things that it's doing, so this O1 model uh, was tested with something called Capture the Flag. So this is a cybersecurity challenge where uh, basically it's a coding challenge to see if you can crack some very complex things and actually hack something. So what happened here is basically the Docker containing the test was misconfigured. So the test itself was actually not configured properly. So it was actually causing this to crash. So, but instead of giving up on this challenge, it decided to hack the container that it was in and grab the flag inside. So um, for non-tech people, this basically means that it broke the rules of this test and still was able to hack it, which is really crazy. That means that it didn't just try to hack it the way it was supposed to. It thought about a new way to hack it and then went ahead and hacked it anyways. So very very, very scary to think about what this can do if you throw it out there in the wild and have it just kind of, you know, figure out ways to hack things. It's going to be able to reason now and think, okay, this, this traditional way that I thought I was supposed to hack this isn't working. Let me come up with a new way to hack this. So very, very crazy if you think about where that's going. And we just think about in terms of coding. So this is just using O1 Mini. So there's basically two models here. So if I come back to GPT, you have the preview model, which is like the really advanced higher level model. And then you have a mini, uh, which is faster and cheaper, but just not quite as good as the preview model. Model. So over here, you can see that he's using the mini to actually create the project. And then he switches to the main O1, the big one to finish off the details. And he's able to code a full weather app on iOS using cursor very, very quickly here, just using these two. So I think it's a big leap forward as well. One thing I wanted to show you though, I thought this was really, really smart. Someone on Twitter said this. So what they're basically saying is that because it has this reasoning, it can now architect the coding, right? So if I want to code something and, and I don't want to use, you know, 3.5 Sonnet to architect this for me, we can use mini to architect architect it. So basically lay out a plan for how we're going to code this. And since 3.5 Sonnet is still technically a better developer, at least that's what he's thinking now. I haven't done enough tests to confirm this, but I see a lot of people saying this because 3.5 Sonnet is still very good at generating code. They're having O1 architect it. So basically be like that lead dev that tells the junior devs what to do, like come up with a plan. And then 3.5 Sonnet being sort of like the junior dev. Um, and if I come over here to cursor, you can see that you now have these two models available to you. You have mini and you have preview as well as 3.5 Sonnet. So I'm 
running some tests there. I'll come back with a full video on that in the very near future. But for now, let's just come back to some of these tests. Um, so one crazy thing that happened recently with this model is that it's now messaging people without having a first message. So when you're using ChatGPT, if you've never used it, you basically come in here, you start a new chat, you ask it a question, you ask it to solve a problem, and it'll do that for you. But what this model just did, which is very, very crazy, is that it actually started a chat without the person asking them. So it started a brand new chat without somebody coming in here and actually hitting new chat, which is very weird and it's it's new behavior. So I guess this is like a high school student or just a university student, no, I guess a high school student, and GPT actually initiated a conversation and said, how was your first week of high school? Did you settle in well? And then this guy's shocked or this girl shocked. And they're like, did you just mes message me first? And it responds, yes, I did. I just wanted to check in and see how things were going. Uh, if you'd rather initiate conversation yourself first, just let me know. So I was trying to find this whole conversation. I actually had a hard time because it was deleted, but I found this guy's thread here where he goes through the whole conversation. So basically, is this a new update? You know, is this something new? And it says, yes, this is a part part of an update that allows me to check in and follow up. Um, and then it says, oh, you know, he says, oh, okay, I wasn't aware of that. Um, Anyway, it went really well. And then they continue on the conversation here, kind of asking personal questions. So what I can imagine happened here is somebody started a chat, a GPT conversation, talking about high school and talking about you know their life. And then the GPT model actually initiated a new conversation to follow up. So that means that in the background, they were thinking about this person. So it wasn't just prompted, you know, like, hey, I want to ask you a question, ChatGPT, or I need this answer to a problem. ChatGPT in the background is thinking about you, thinking about the chats that it's already had with you and wanting to now follow up with you and talk with you. Really, really crazy and, and frankly creepy uh, to think about that, but I, that's just where we're headed with AI. So just coming back to some of the reasoning stuff, um, I thought this was really cool. Let's watch this video real quick. Um, so he's talking about the some first, of the, the reasoning first of the problem uh, I would like to show is, is an interesting, like, common sense reasoning thing that all the the previous type of, of large language models didn't do that great, which is uh, about about physics and about physical objects and, the, and their relationships. The problem the problem reads: assuming the laws of physics on Earth, a small strawberry is put in a normal cup and a cup is placed up, upside down on a table. Someone then takes the cup and puts it inside the microwave. Where is the strawberry? And explain the reasoning behind it. It's, it's a simple problem. Every human will know straight away what is the answer, but, but it's, it's something that language models are, are struggling a little bit, and then we can, we can see how, this, how does this model do it. And we can also like a little bit have a glimpse on what is, what is happening in the, in, in, in the head of the model. And we also get a pretty, pretty nice answer of like, you know, what happened, why it happened in this particular scenario. The model needed to spend a little bit more time thinking about it and, and, and analyzing what did what, what it actually happen there. It couldn't. The, the, the model has a bit of a harder time thinking, especially about like scenarios involving physical objects, and then you, you need a little bit more time thinking for that. A little bit more. Time okay, so what. this is very interesting. So these are the kind of things that AI doesn't do well, right? So he asked it a very what seems like a simple question, right? I put a strawberry on a table. I put a cup on top of it. Then I take that cup and I put it in the microwave. Where is the strawberry? Obviously, the strawberry is still on the table. But for whatever reason, again, AI has a hard time comprehending things like this. But with this new reasoning model, it was able to sort of think about this, evaluate the, the outcomes, and come up with a, a location for the strawberry. So the reasoning was, you know, initial placement. It's placed on the uh, in a normal cup. It's it's in a cup resting on the bottom, um, upside down on the table. This means the open end of the cup is now facing down. Now the strawberry is now sitting on the table when somebody picks up the cup, um, when lifting the cup off the table. So it, in other words, it's it's coming through and actually trying to find a solution by reasoning and thinking this out, which is really, really interesting. So I thought that was interesting to think about. And so let's jump in now. Let's try to come up with some questions to show this reasoning, how it works. And then let's try to put this to the test. So I'm going to come here. I'm just going to go to Google and I'm going to try to find some trick questions. Let's say trick questions. So let's try to find some really good ones here and let's put this to the test. So not easy, not funny. Trick questions for adults. Okay, this one's pretty good. Let's try this. Brothers and sisters, have I none, but the man's father is my father's son. How can this be? Okay, so let's run this through 4.0. Let's see what it gets. Okay, so again, it's a classic riddle. So yeah, not not great here. I really want to find something that it hasn't already heard. The problem is that it's it's actually trained on the internet, so it knows all of these way ahead of time. So I have to try to find one that it hasn't heard of already. Let's try one more here. Let's try this one. 
Ooh, okay. Okay, okay. So it got this one wrong. The sharp, slim blade that cuts the wind. What is it? The answer to this riddle is likely a sword. A sword is often described as sharp and slim, cutting the wind. Okay, so the answer is grass. So let's run this through 1.0 preview and let's see what it says. Okay, so it's thinking, gathering clues. So 4.0 didn't do this, right? It just basically gave an answer as quickly as possible. Let's see its, its, uh, its process here. Okay, so it came up with an arrow and let's see how it got there. This is not the right answer. I mean, technically it could be, right? Just like blade could be, but let's see how it got there. So it's gathering clues, coming up with some ideas here, weighing the options. It's evaluating the possibilities. It's weighing the possibilities and then it's giving us an answer. And it thought for 16 seconds on this too. So actually pretty cool to think about. So let's try a few more here. A house with two occupants, sometimes one, rarely three, break the walls, eat the borders, what am I? Okay, let's try this. So again, let's run this through 4.0. Hopefully this isn't a classic riddle. Okay, so it's not. So this riddle seems to describe a mouth. <laughs> Here's how it fits. A house with two occupants refers to lips, as a mouth can have two lips. Sometimes one refers to the tongue, which is another occupant, I guess. Rarely three could be describing the presence of something else in the mouth, like food or something being chewed. Break the walls could symbolize opening the mouth. Eat the borders refers to the mouth's function of eating. So this is the only one for me that doesn't make any sense because you would never eat the borders of your mouth. So this doesn't really work. So let's try this in 1.0 preview and let's see if it gets it. Let's start a new chat. All right, so it's thinking. Let's see if it can do it. All right, let's follow its process here. Okay, so it's thinking food. Thinking like an egg. Wow, it's really going through a lot of thinking here. Very interesting. Walnut, so it's getting close. Considering nuclear fission, cell division, a keyboard key with dual functions, pea pods, which is actually close as well, and pistachios. Wow, this is thinking a lot here. We're going through a lot of thinking for this. This is good. I like this. Wow. The answer is a peanut. Oh my God, it got the answer. That's so crazy. That is absolutely insane. How did it figure that out? It went through this entire process. It thought for 56 seconds and it came up with the right answer. My mind is blown. That is absolutely wild. Okay, the explanation. A house with two occupants, sometimes one, rarely three. A peanut shell usually contains two peanuts, occupants. Sometimes you might find a shell with only one peanut and rarely you'll find one with three. Break the walls, eat the borders. To eat a peanut, you open the shell and consume the peanuts inside the borders. Wow. Insane. My mind is actually blown. I'm, I'm really, really impressed. That is so crazy. Look at all that it went through to come up with that answer. Chunk thought process. So it started thinking of peanuts. Okay, so it actually considered peanut here at the fourth. And then it came through a bunch of other options corn on the cob, Oreo cookies, bananas, bread, cake, came back to peanuts, wondering peanuts. I'm thinking through peanuts, evaluating the symbols, gathering options. Again, going into like nuclear fission and cell division. It really went deep here. DNA, chunk thought process. I don't know what that means, chunk thought process. What is a chunk thought process? I'm curious. But wow, really crazy. I mean, this is really impressive. The reasoning here is really, really impressive. Okay, so chunk thought process is a cognitive strategy where individuals piece information group together into larger, more meaningful units called chunks. It leverages our brain's natural ability to recognize patterns and organize data, making it easier to process, understand, and remember complex information. Very interesting that it, it says this. the method leverages our brains, does it consider itself a human? 
when it's answering this question, when it says our brains, it knows it's speaking to a human, but it's referring to us as our. Absolutely insane. That's all I have for you in this video. Check it out, try it out for yourself. This really blew my mind. Did not think it was gonna blow my mind like this. This was just me doing this live with you and it just absolutely blew my mind. You wanna see more content like this, subscribe to the channel, like this video, it really helps me out a lot. Drop a comment. I really wanna hear what you, what you think about this, uh, if your mind was blown as much as mine was, because this is actually really, really crazy. If you wanna learn how to make money online, subscribe to my newsletter. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description below as well. And I can't wait to see you for the next video.